and welcome to the End in Mind podcast. I'm your host, Caitlin, the owner of Meraki Media Management. The End in Mind is a place where we come to share stories, tips, and strategies of many entrepreneurs, creatives, business owners, and just some people that aren't willing to live the traditional lifestyle. We talk about how to live outside of the box today and how to incorporate what really is important in your life to keep that end goal always in mind. Again, if you would like to reach out to me in any type of way, you can find me on Instagram at Meraki underscore media underscore management. And I hope to hear from you all soon. Thanks so much and enjoy our show. up party people welcome back to the end in mind podcast i'm your host caitlin and i'm super stoked to be here with you guys today i have an awesome topic which i actually wanted to give a quick shout out to my dear friend and amazing community leader emily she runs the conscious creators club and she is absolutely amazing i am in her conscious creators club we focus a lot on manifestation how to manage mindset how to really build a life that we truthfully desire and i actually when i'm recording this just finished up speaking to her community and I wanted to make sure that I let you guys know that if you are currently looking for more of a manifesting practice and you really want to you know ignite your manifesting this is the place for you it is extremely affordable to be in her community which I absolutely love and I also have a coupon code for you guys so if you are interested check out the coupon code listed below the code is fall access all caps and um, there's only 10 spots available so it's really important you guys will get 10% off the yearly community membership if you have any questions uh, I'll also link Emily's Instagram below and obviously you guys know mine so get in touch with me, get in touch with her, and I can help you use the Kuhan code uh, if you have any issues. But she's absolutely amazing and has totally helped my manifestation, which actually leads me into today's topic on manifestation and how social media can really hinder our manifestations. I felt this for real when I was doing and currently going through my pivot uh, away from social media management and really into intuitive marketing. And I find it very interesting when I am on my healing journey that once I start to come up to these huge breakthroughs, which I talk about my coach with this a lot because it's very conflicting, When I'm coming up to these massive breakthroughs, my resistance to those breakthroughs heightens. Like it heightens so much, you guys. There are days where I truthfully have no motivation at all, which if you know me, that is not like me whatsoever. And it's a very unique feeling because I haven't I have experienced this in the past, but nothing to this level. And I find it, you know, very challenging to push through. So when I'm starting to talk about, you know, putting things off or procrastination, like when I was in school, I didn't really have a choice to procrastinate. And I'm such a big planner that it's very rare that I procrastinate something like to the day of that it needs to get in for my team or for myself. Like I love to plan my schedule. So that is very rare. But over the past few months, your girl has been checked out. Those deadlines have been coming up to the very last day. Sometimes when I'm even on that deadline day, I don't feel like writing content or I don't feel like, you know, getting my team members the new copy for our website, like whatever it may be, when normally those things really, really excite me. And I think a lot of this has to do with comparison. So when we are leveling up, when we're on our healing journey, there's so many different ways of leveling up. Uh, It happens multiple times and each person is different, right? And 
it happens in all stages of healing because we're always growing, we're always evolving, we're always getting better. That's what's so beautiful about this work and why this is really such an opportunity that we've been given to heal and to expand our brains in this way. So what happens to me when I fall into this comparison or I'm going to call it our level up moment because it really is just full-blown resistance. Like whatever way I can procrastinate, I am procrastinating. It's absolutely absurd. And what I always have to come back to is my end in mind, which is really why I started this podcast so I could share with you guys like, hey, this is what I'm dealing with in my healing journey. Isn't this mind blowing and crazy? And are you guys also experiencing this too? Or can we somehow experience this together? And that's really the motive of all of this. So when I go into comparison, I am looking at my competitors, I'm looking at my peers. This has been a big one for me recently. Looking at my peers and seeing like, where they've been traveling or how much money they've been making and they're putting it out on social media or maybe they just bought another house right or a new car and it's so interesting because i still feel so happy for them but in the same moment i am then comparing myself to it so now i still hold that compassion i have the space for the compassion the excitement for them but i still have this inkling of comparison and it can put me on this thought train that is extremely detrimental to the growth of my business, the growth of my mindset. And it's just kind of that resistance. So, and what happens is then I'm stuck in that like doing moment instead of actually adding action, right? I stay stuck in that place because I'm just, my thoughts are over consumed by this comparison. And I think this happens to a lot of us highly sensitives because we're already you know, taking in so much in our environments. Quick side note, I was just at a wedding this weekend. It was such a good reconnecting moment with them. And I just loved all of the social interactions, uh, which like recently as a highly sensitive person, getting back out into the world, it's like ridiculous that I still have to say this, but I work alone. Like I'm a solopreneur. I literally work in my basement every day. So I don't see people out like all the time. Um, so getting back into like social situations was very challenging for me at the beginning of things opening back up. But now I like am vibing. Like I love that social stuff. I do need a few days to regroup after, which I'm just realizing as my as like who I am, right? This is really just who I am. I need to recharge. So that's been something else that I've noticed socially that's been happening, which I wanted to share with you all. And this social interaction that I'm describing is exactly what happens on social media as well. It just might not feel as intense because we're not face to face, right? So it's all kind of like these storylines, these narratives that we're building in our brains. And as a highly sensitive, I tend to do this with people in my everyday environment as well, like in my face-to-face -face environment. I will create these narratives in my brain or like tell myself a false story that they hate me or that they think I'm crazy. It's like a little bit nutty at times when I've really stopped and gained the awareness around it, which I would challenge you to do as well, especially if you identify as that highly sensitive, which I know majority of you do that listen to this podcast, or you have people in your lives that are highly sensitive. Uh, that's, that's a pretty normal, I would say, thought process, at least for me as like more social aspects. So when I'm on social media, it's very similar and I need to become extremely aware of the thought process or the patterns that are you know occurring so when i was going through this pivot tv was actually very helpful for me and i kind of started to challenge myself like wow can i watch this whole episode with commercials coming through like 60 second commercials or whatever without grabbing my phone in between to like keep me highly stimulated like that's what most people do, right? We're like, oh, you know, there's a commercial. I'm gonna hop on Instagram really quick. And then sometimes the show comes back on and I'm missing stuff anyway. So like my thoughts, I only have so much, you know, attention that I can give one thing. 
before I'm just not paying attention to anything at all, which would be that overstimulation that social media actually wants you to do because they want you to be in that mindless scroll of spending hours and hours on TikTok and Instagram. Like that's literally what these apps are designed to do. I wanted to play with it. Like once you kind of add this game to it, right, with your brain even, and you're challenging your brain, you're like, Ooh, let's, let's try this like as a game. Let's challenge myself. Let's see if I can do this. And it's not about, you know, getting upset at yourself. Like if you do end up scrolling for hours on end, it's more about keeping that awareness. Like how did I feel after I eventually pulled myself out of that scroll hole? I know I don't feel good. So when I would get through a full TV episode without checking my phone, I realized that I was actually able to take in so much from these shows and that was fulfilling like my needs, right? I didn't need the added stimulation of my phone on top of that because that's when my thoughts get completely out of control, right? Because I'm so overstimulated. I'm so not in the present moment. My thoughts are going one way, another way. Then something else is coming in like it's exhausting, to be honest with you guys. So when you set up these smaller challenges, then you can start to build on that. Right. So I started with, you know, limiting my time on social to begin with. Now I still get notifications. My app shut off at a certain time. Sometimes I don't always follow that, which is fine. But most of the time I try to. And then again, like I have more time to go on a WALK with Bales. Sorry, I don't want her to hear me say the W word because then we will have to go literally right now. Um, I can be more present cooking dinner. I can be coloring. I can be, you know, so much more present like in the moment rather than always grabbing for my phone as an escape. Because I find, which you guys may resonate with this, you may not, and you know this podcast, take with it what you want, leave whatever doesn't serve you. For me, I use social media as an escape. It's easy. It's an easy way for me to fill my time. Now, mind you, when I was in high school, Instagram came out. So I was a little bit older. Like these kids now, they're born with this social media. But with this, it's coming up very frequently. I was actually just listening to an interview that my coach did with someone on parenting. And they talked about how social media can even affect parents' parenting now, right? Like it's literally trickled down to so many areas of our lives that it is our responsibilities as the user to become more self-aware, to realize like, hey, I'm spending way too much time on here. I need to get off. I need to go back out in nature. I need to get a cup of coffee. I need to make a tea. I need some water. I don't need social media. And I find so many people my age, even like when they're on their lunch hour or, you know, when they're with friends is a great example and there's an awkward silence they'll like grab for their phones for me I always try to say like hey I just have to do this work thing really quick I'm just gonna hop on my phone and then I'll be off and I'll be back and present with you like I try to communicate what I'm doing on my phone so that people know that I'm not just disengaging because the second that you grab for your phone That's basically a tall tale sign that you're like bored with the conversation or that you don't want to talk to these people. At least that's how I was raised. So when I am on my phone with people in public, I tell them what I'm doing. But so many of these young people, they're literally using it as an escape, which is also what I do. So I can empathize with that and I see it happening. So if you are currently using this as an escape, it's okay. Don't feel bad. Don't beat yourself up. Don't think about, you know, when you grabbed your phone versus like, you know, doing the dishes, right? Like we all use it as a procrastination technique as well. And it's very normal. It's just all about us bettering ourselves, right? So how can we get back to our intuition, get back to who we actually want to be? I'm sure as hell, if you thought about what a successful version of you was, 
you wouldn't think about you scrolling on social media, right? So it's, again, all about that energy. And bringing this back to manifestation, our procrastinations always lead us away from the end in mind, from that end goal. There are always going to be those hindrances, right? Especially when I mentioned earlier, we're going through a pivot, we're going through that level up. Those distractions, those procrastinations seem so much easier because who would rather dive headfirst into the unknown, right? Or would you rather scroll on social media? Like, I think I'll take the latter, right? And I think giving yourself the space, right, to use social media at times, but to not use it as that distraction is what truthfully empowers us as human beings. So when we go on social media with intention, we can use social media to manifest, to teach us something, to create more abundance, to connect with people. But when we go on social media with no intention, then we're not giving ourselves anything, right? We're not actually coming out of this saying like, hey, here's going to be the product at the end of today's scroll session, right? We're just literally endlessly scrolling. And like I said, that's what these applications want. That's literally what their marketing is here to do. So gaining that awareness, taking back your power, noticing that your time and energy is being spent for so long on these damn electronics. Like when we have all of this beauty at our fingertips where we can be working on something or just sitting, right? It doesn't even need to be action. Your manifestations also come back to giving yourself space to allow them to happen. So when we set an intention, we set a manifestation, we are consciously creating, Conscious Creators Club, shout out Emily. If you didn't hear the first part of this episode, go back and definitely tune into that. As we are consciously creating, we need space. We need patience. We need the opposite of overstimulation, which is what we're getting out of social media. So when we're constantly being shown like this is what success is, success is a million dollar yacht, flying to Bali, being able to buy huge dinners and large bottles of wine, right? This is what success is. Then we're not giving ourselves the space to decide, is that what success means to me? When I did this exercise in the Conscious Creators Club, actually, I realized that I am my version of success. I am currently living in that successful lifestyle that I have been striving for. You guys, I'm not even going to kid you since I was five years old. I was an only child, so I had a lot of time to think growing up. If you could have told me when I was six years old that I would be living the life that I am today... Six-year-old me would have literally been knocked off of her feet. She would have never even been able to mentally grasp that this is now me and what I'm doing. But because we're over-consuming, right? Because I was over-consuming in my pivot, it threw me into scarcity. It threw me into this mindset of there's never enough. There's so many of these intuitive marketers. There's so many of these life coaches. There's so many people already doing this. But guess what? What we always say on this podcast, there's no one like me. There's no one like you. There's literally not anyone on this planet that has had the same exact experiences as you, mixed with your personality, mixed with some of that fun and humor, right? All of the creative, unique parts of you that make you you is why developing your business is going to make people want to work with you. So me, creating this podcast taking you guys on this journey with me, right? This pivot was freaking hard, you guys, for me. Like, it brought up all the scarcity. It's like my learning disability scarcity came back. My money mindset came back issues. My issues with my relationships came back. I mean, it literally all came back. I was like, whoa, we are not going back there, right? Like, I'm sure you guys can relate to this. We've all had these experiences. But once I was able to reground, recuperate, and honestly get off of social media for a certain amount of time, I had this sense of peace. Like, literally today, 
I'm sitting in my basement thinking to myself, this is what I've wanted my whole life. This is, this is the house. This is the dog. This is the relationship. This is the car. This is the food. This is all of the things that I had lacked in my life. I now currently have. And I didn't have to go to social media to tell me that. I actually just had to get quiet and journal and be around all of these other amazing conscious creators that are doing the same exact thing. But we just haven't acknowledged it. So for example, one of these pieces of information that she gives us, which I won't give you guys all of it because the workbook was amazing. And I really, if you're feeling called to this, like you should absolutely join this club. It's fantastic. She talks about what, what do you already have in your life today? Like, what do you already have in your life today that you can be grateful for, that you created, that you literally designed, right? That you've given yourself, but you haven't acknowledged probably since the day you bought and or gave it to yourself and or developed it, right? And we lived in that for maybe five minutes and then we were on to the next damn goal. Instead of giving ourselves like, hey, no, look at all of this. Look at this business. Look at this marketing strategy. Look at my puppy. Look at my relationship. Look at how I talk to my mom. Look at how I clean my house. Look at how I made this cup of coffee. Like it can be so simple. Things that we never gave to ourselves before, right? Maybe we were in a bad place. Maybe we were growing, right? And we weren't able to give that to ourselves. Maybe we were a child. For me, it's a lot of childhood stuff. So we really weren't able to have that. But now we have it and now we ignore it. Now we don't even take it in that we have all of this. This is the part that we have to get back to. In the Conscious Creators Club, I had to set an intention for a manifestation. Mine was around money. (laughs) Big surprise there. Because I've been trying to work on it. And one thing that I had to stop and realize was like, uh, I have reached all of my money goals. I have created the financial awareness and freedom that I wanted. So why can't I create that again with this new business and or build on my current business? So when we're stuck in this scarcity, when we're stuck in this comparison, it's just like the algorithm. You engage with one thought like that, it's only showing you those thoughts. It's literally putting all of those thoughts in front of your brain at all times. And this is what happens in our brain too, right? We look for examples. It comes back to that primal instinct in all of us. And we're, we're looking for these examples subconsciously. But it's keeping us in that stuck place. So it's exactly like the algorithm. Anytime you engage with a thought like that, you're going to go down that thought loop. Now, this doesn't mean that your negative thoughts aren't there to protect you. Because if you're you're an avid listener of this podcast, you know that that is not something that I'm here to preach is to like cut off all your negative thoughts. That's like so not me at all. Your negative thoughts are there to protect you and you can hold space for them. But I think what it's important to know is that we are not our thoughts. We are not these negative thoughts. These thoughts are just thin air, right? And we decide to act on them or not. We decide to feed in energy because we all have intrusive thoughts, right? So we can only control our brains like on so many levels. Like Isn't it like only 10% of our brains we're currently able to control as humans? I think what we're doing on this podcast, what we're doing in society now is allowing us to tap into these other areas of our brain and realize like, hey, we do actually have some control here. We don't have to be at the mercy of our thoughts, but I don't have to feed into that thought. That thought doesn't have to become me. I do not have to become that thought unless I want to. And that's where your manifestation comes in. So let's say you're manifesting. You're in a manifesting space, right? You really want to manifest $10,000. But every time you go on social media, all you're engaging with is how to, you know, get out of debt, right? So it's coming back to like this debt mindset. Everybody's in so much debt. 
all these Americans have so much debt, right? It's like saying this over and over in your head. It's not reflecting to you this abundant place that you're trying to get to. It's not reflecting to you the $10,000. It's reflecting what you lack because that's what you're engaging with because that's what your primal instincts want you to do because it's the unknown of having $10,000 just handed to you over the counter, right? Or whatever. Maybe you bought a lottery ticket. So if we are so stuck with being comfortable, then we can't manifest. And that's where the comparison thought loop comes in. It's protecting us. It's that primal instinct. So realizing, diffusing from those negative thoughts and allowing yourself to bring in these positive thoughts, these manifestation thoughts, these thoughts of, hey, I got up out of bed this morning. Hey, I took a warm shower today. Hey, I literally have great water to drink that's cold on ice with a straw, which just makes me happy, right? Like all of these little things that we give ourselves on a daily basis, but because they've become rituals or so subconscious, even meditating is a form of this. We are not acknowledging what we're actually feeding into ourselves, So this is where you go back into that masculine mindset instead of in that feminine energy of just sitting and allowing things to come to you, allowing your eyes to open, allowing you to take in the beauty around you. This is where the manifestation work starts to unfold. And a lot of it comes down to being quiet, getting really quiet. And again, coming back to what do I even want? What do I already have? How can I create more of that? By looking around and seeing what you already have, you're saying to yourself, wow, I already have all of that. Why can't I do that again? When I got my inheritance from my father, before that, I literally thought like my mom was not the breadwinner. Uh, She was grieving and in a gnarly state, I'll be honest with you guys. 15-year-old Caitlin thought, okay, I will never be able to go to college. I'm going to have to get a job at the hamburger shop up the street that I used to work at from 10 until I was 12 years old. At the time, I was actually still working there when I was 15, but I ended up having to quit. But I thought, like, this is going to be my life. I'm going to work there eventually you know I'll be able to work my way up I can support my mom I can support my family I'll make this work I thought I'll never go to school I could never pay for college like you know I thought my dad had passed away we literally showed up to the lawyer's office and she tells me that he had a life insurance policy that I didn't know about and that I was going to be just fine and that I didn't have to get a job right then and I was going to be able to go to college But because I had created so much of this scarcity, right? Like when I was going through my pivot, I'm I'm going back to that mindset. I'm going back to like, oh my gosh, okay, I'm going to have to get a job because I don't see the money right now. But then I remembered this story that I just shared with you all where money quite literally came out of nowhere. And even if, even though it was an extremely unfortunate situation, It's been able to help me, right, my whole life. It's even helping my mindset now. It's even having an impact now. And this is 11 years ago. So there is a lot to be said for utilizing the situations that have happened to you in the past to help you continue to create and manifest because you guys, once we tap into this work, I mean, it's limitless. It is literally limitless. The house that I'm currently in was a house that I looked at when I was, I think, 16 after my dad passed away. And I really wanted my mom to get a new house because we were paying rent and it was just time for us to move out of that house. It was really sad, to be honest. Um, And we weren't able to afford the house at that time. Well, this house is identical to that house. It's literally identical, even down to the floors. So like this, this opportunity, the things that we want are possible, even though we tell ourselves they're completely not. Miracles happen every day. 
I even think about some influencers that sometimes, like Shannon Ford always comes to my mind. She also has a great, pretty funny podcast. Uh, it's a little raunchy. So if you're not into that, maybe don't head over and check her out. She's an influencer in Nashville. She was on like the first series of Very Cavalry. She literally was just like a regular everyday person, got on the show, was only on the show for one season. And she's mega famous now. Like she literally has so many social media followers. That's what she does full time. Like this stuff can happen out of nowhere. You could be asked tomorrow to come work on a show or you could be given tomorrow a winning lottery ticket, as I mentioned. And allowing ourselves to open up to that and utilize the tools that we have around us to already see what we've created, that's that power. That's us taking back our power. That's us saying like, hey, I'm not going to get stuck in the scroll hole and comparisonitis because I'm a badass and I've already created an amazing business or I'm a badass because I got up out of bed today and I'm going to go for a walk. But yeah, just really getting back into that energy, that's what's going to help you create. That's the creative energy that you want. And if you are struggling with this, take a screenshot, tag me on social, let me know what you guys think about this manifestation perspective. I am going to be tagging Emily in all of this uh, because she's just absolutely amazing. If you guys have not checked her out yet, please go check her out on social media. She's also going to be opening up certifications for Theta Healers in the next few months here. And I will tell you guys, I went through a Theta session a few months ago and it was mind blowing. We didn't touch on my scarcity that I hit there. I did a little bit when I shared my learning disability on today's episode, but that was a huge one that came up for me in my Theta Healing session. And it allowed me to unpack a lot of the things that I had pushed down for years and years and years. So really powerful if you're interested in connecting with her to getting a session or even just talking to her about theta healing. She's very open to it. So I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day. I hope you write down four or five amazing things that you currently have in your space right now in your own mini universe because that will only help us continue to create. So I love you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Give me a shout out testimonial. If you guys have some time and you know, feel like you want to pay it forward for me a little, but if not, there's no harm, no foul. We're all always welcome here. And I'm just so grateful for your ears and your time. I will see you next time. Thank you so much for listening to The End in Mind. I would like to remind you all, if you haven't yet reached out to me on Instagram, we are at Meraki underscore media underscore management. It will be in our show notes as well. If you would like to reach out to me, we always offer free coaching through Instagram based around our Instagram training and our business Instagram practices. If you need any type of support, please do not hesitate to reach out to me there. And we also offer several different types of consulting and training packages if you're looking for a little bit more in-depth tips. So thank you all for listening in. And of course, I want you all to keep the end in mind as you continue with your day and or work week. Have a great week and I will see you all next time.